It's a battlefield, normally used to declare winners and losers. But this one is the site of unconditional love. The whole entire football team from 2011 uh, till now loves Lori. I adore them. I simply adore them. Lori Paulson takes the term superfan to her own unique level. <laughs> And the New Mexico State University football players love her for it. Like when you hear Miss Lori's name, you just think of all the beautiful names in the world just to describe her. She means the world to me. I always tell her I love her uh, to the moon and back. This love started growing five years ago when Lori invited a few players to her home for Sunday dinner. She put the love in the cooking. It was the beginning of a tradition, later witnessed by Lori's best friend, Nicole. Everything was homemade, like the crust to the pie was homemade. I mean, it was just an extravagant thing so that these boys could have something to eat home cooked. Vern, this gentleman's a saddle maker. Lori's father. Maggie, come on, come on Molly, good girl. Driving his stagecoach, <laughs> said as more and more players started coming over for dinner. She figured out that, oh, these kids are, hurting for family. And that's what Lori became, family. You know, they hug her and call her Miss Lori and they lay on her lap like they're, you know, 50 pound kids when they're 300 pound linemen. And like all families, there are challenges. One Sunday night meal was followed with an announcement about a diagnosis. And so when you hear pink eye cancer, you think, this is gonna kill me. I sat there for a little bit, and as soon as I opened my mouth, I said, you're gonna beat it. Her so team so immediately right. rallied around her. Uh, we would like to ask you if you'd like to be our honorary captain of the year. Oh, yeah. 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 And Lori rallied right back, cheering on her team at practices and on the sidelines. Well, it's like the epitome of hope. You know, they are a program that has been struggling for so long. In this game against Idaho, it's overtime. Pressure, throws. Number two catches a miraculous interception. He catches the ball with his feet. Shafan Ferguson. No Helping the Aggies finally break a 17-game losing streak. Somebody else can now proudly wear the nation's longest losing streak. It's over. We came from 30 points down to win the game. Yeah. And uh, in the locker room after the game, that's what the players wanted. They wanted to give that game ball to Lori. Uh, whether you're winning or whether you're losing, she's there to just inspire and to make sure that these guys know that uh, she believes in them. I actually had got hurt during the game, and she was the first person by my side. and. You know, she just, Andrew, you did great out there. Win or lose, you're number one in my book. Stories of her support, strength, and strong will are pretty easy to come by. There's the time she was admitted to a hospital on a game day, her cancer tumors dangerously lowering her blood sugar. So she snuck out of the, the hospital just to come see us. She literally broke out of the hospital for her, their game, yeah. Well, at first I was like, man, Miss Lori, she's kind of crazy right <laughs> now. I looked down on the field before the game, and there she was in a sparkly Aggie shirt and her hospital bracelet. When it all comes down to it, you know, that describes her. She's, you can never tell her no. What She's going to do whatever she wants to do, and she loves us, and so that just meant a lot for me and the team just to see her going through so much and just wanting to come see us be successful. How many people care about things that much, you know? Then there's the time she flew to Atlanta to support NMSU graduate Valerian Umezioke. She was going through her 10th round of chemo. 10th round of chemo. I'm talking about she's feeling the worst of the worst. She gets on the plane to, so she doesn't miss my first NFL game. And she would have been there before she had cancer, and she was there when she got cancer. That's what. That speaks volumes about who she is as a person. All while continuing her Sunday dinners for the current players. Since she's been diagnosed, she's worried about everyone else but herself. Lori's father. To think about everybody else and how they're feeling and how they're doing rather than herself, uh, it's just 
mind boggling, you know, and it's what's given me the strength to get through it because I think if, if she can do it, you know, I, I have to, you know? Getting through it. Would you be up for throwing the first pitch out? <laughs> By continuing to live her life. She did so good, baby. She did good. Giving her unconditional love. Thank you. To everyone around her. And one more from you. While expecting nothing in return. You know, why are so many people touched by her, including myself? I think it's just been her ability to love you, no questions asked, and not expect anything in return. Uh, <laughs> sorry. She credits the loving support of her family, her husband gently trying to relieve her pain no, I'm okay. from sitting for this interview. Okay, you ready? After 20 rounds of chemo, there are no more treatment options. The cancer is terminal. Um, there's only so many treatments for my kind of disease, and then there's not anymore. She's now receiving hospice care to help improve her quality of life. I'm just living every day. Um, the best that I can, my best, my best me. And um, it's a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> Which brings us to Lori's legacy and what she calls putting her money where her mouth is. It was like the best gift I've ever given. She donated $100,000 of her life insurance policy to the football team to help pay for anything the players need. I feel like they would do just about anything for me. They'd lay it all out for me. And I feel like I would do just about anything for them, including giving them a gift. Today, in the Hall of Legends, next to the male faces of the Aggies past, is the name of the woman shaping its players' futures. Because I believe in them. And they believe in her. We always hold up an L like this for Miss Lori. And that means no matter what, we're always gonna keep pushing, keep fighting, because that's what Miss Lori will want us to do. Just 10 days after conducting these interviews, Lori passed away. She was 35 years old. I've learned that love feels so much better than any money or anything. Mm -hmm. That love is kind of the core of us all.